What's going on guys, Quinn69 here, how you guys doing today? As you can see here, I'm going to be bringing you guys a guide on the Crusader. Uh, you guys have been asking for this for the longest time, I keep telling you this is a pretty standard setup. Uh, but you guys have been demanding a guide, so whatever. Uh, I play Crusader this season as my alt, alt character, and I, you know, occasionally I push the rank 1 on the leaderboards a few times now. I think due to the fact that uh, it's not an extremely active class because it has the perception that it's really bad. Okay, don't get me wrong, Crusaders are pretty, um, you know, they're pretty mediocre right now. But they're definitely not, they're not, definitely not just unplayable. You can use them for tons of things like speed farming, um, you, can use, you can play support builds and greater rifts. You know, they're not completely dead like people are making it sound like they are. Uh, so anyway, let's go. This is my Greater Rift solo pushing guide. This is the one I used uh, to push the leaderboards with. This is the build that you guys keep asking about. Pretty much, what you want to do the whole time to play this build is throw hammers. <laughs> That's pretty, um, it's pretty advanced. It's pretty advanced. You guys throw hammers. Hammers is the only source of your damage, and uh, literally, it, it keeps you alive. If you stop throwing hammers, then your cooldowns don't get reset, and your character will inevitably die. Uh, he will not survive. The Crusaders are insanely squishy, and without all of their defensive active buffs, um, you know, you're, you're, no, you're just a dead little rat. Um, so now you guys are going to be like, what the hell, how come he's moving and throwing hammers, and how is he doing that, and how does he move so fast? I, okay, what I'm doing is called stutter stepping. I will specifically outline how to do it um, before I go over the gear. So after I go through the gameplay um, and describe how to play the build, I will go over the stutter stepping, and then we will do the gear and, uh, you know, the skills and all that good stuff. So if you want to and you just want to know how to do that, you can just skip to that part. Sweet as. So, throw a hammer, stutter step. The reason we're stutter stepping is because we're using hexing pants. Hexing pants um, allow you to do 25% more damage and they give you 25% uh, resource cost reduction whilst moving. Hence why you have to constantly move. It's, it's, it's really the best way of doing this build. Okay, so we've gotten that part out of the way. You throw hammers 24-7. Okay, and then you need to maintain all of your buffs almost. Okay, almost. I say almost because it's, some, it's situational. Um, okay, so provoke this thing right here. This is this is what's giving you your wrath back. Um, every time you press it, it gives you a static amount of wrath back and an increased amount per enemy you hit. So obviously you want to be using provoke in big like groups of density. Um, the, the build itself... Will not it does not do well if there's no density. The, the way the way it works is you know the more people you can provoke, um, the more wrath you get back, and also the more enemies you're fighting, the more pain enhancer um, stacks you're going to have. So the faster you can throw your hammers, and the faster you can spin your wrath. So you can actually see my wrath. Um, it, 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 it's almost I'm almost losing it every single time, and you'll actually see a few times where I fight when there's not enough density and my wrath will actually struggle and I will actually lose DPS. So you're going to want to have, um, you know, density 24-7. So you're just skipping towards packs at all times. Um, or equal to or less than three enemies due to the fact that you have braces. But you're not going to look for that situation. Never in a rift are you going to be like, alright, I want to just find a three pe like a three mob pack and fight that. Um, that's only when you're just finishing off a rare pack. Um, you can you can basically afford to fight equal to or less than three enemies due to the fact that we've got braces that will refund the blessed hammer costs if you only hit three to three enemies or less. Okay. Uh, on top of that, you're going to be using um, iron skin. So this thing right here, this gives you 50% damage reduction, um, and it allows you to move through enemies unhindered. So you can see how my character is sliding through the enemies. Um, it, it, that, that doesn't sound that powerful, right? You might be like, oh, why don't I need to choose another rune? Due to the fact that, you know, I don't need to move through enemies. Okay, when, you, when your Crusader is specifically fishing uh, for density, it, it, it helps a huge amount. Due to the fact that you have to stutter step the whole time. If your character stops moving or stops stutter stepping, even for a second, the, it, it, it literally, your hexing pants deactivate. Your damage goes down, your resource cost reduction goes down, you're then unable to spam hammers, um, you then are not able to keep your cooldowns being re reset, and then you just die, and you don't do any damage because you're dead. Um, so yeah, it, it's a really, really overpowered rune, um, so Iron Skin, because your 50% damage reduction allows you to move through enemies, you want to be using that, um, you want to just maintain this buff 
24-7. Um, you can obviously just spam it on cooldown if you want. That's what I'm doing because um, it's really sketchy. Sometimes I have downtime. Sometimes I have like half a second of overlap. Uh, but yeah. We're also then using, um, because the Seeker set, if you guys don't know how it works, um, the Seeker set, when you when you use Falling Sword, you gain a 50% damage reaction buff. I think it's for 5 seconds or thereabouts. Um, so you're going to want to be jumping every 5 seconds. You can see I haven't jumped. I'm just an idiot. There we go. Now there we go. Jump. Boom. 50% damage reduction. So 50 from here, 50 from there. So every 5 seconds or more, um, you'll see that I'll sometimes overlap it even more. Or well, sometimes I'm just, wow, I'm just so bad. Wow. Jump, idiot, jump! There we go, so jump, 50% damage reduction. You can see how it's, it, I mean, it, and super, super high grader. So, I mean, this is the rank, this is the rank one clear. But, like, I mean, uh, you wouldn't be able to get away with that. I'm pretty rusty right now. This is my third grader after the night. Um, you know, I'm, I haven't played Crusader in, like, a week. Uh, yeah, so, y you're not going to be able to afford to make mistakes like that by, like, having, having downtime on your Falling Sword, for example. So, I think I intentionally, okay, on top of that, you want to maintain the Falling Sword buff, uh, so, so, you, so you have that 50% damage reduction. Okay, you're then using Akarat's Champion Profit. Um, it, it's a huge defensive increase. Uh, it gives you like 150% increased armor or something like that. Um, it's insane. Uh, the amount of survivability you get from this ability is just crazy. On top of that, it means you're immune to movement impairing effects. Um, and it, it just gives you that crazy amount of damage reduction. Uh, so you want to be using this literally every time you can on cooldown. Obviously what you're seeing here is the game is actually lagging out. This Crusader build actually has such high APS. When you get really high density, um, it actually struggles. The game actually struggles um, to keep up because you're, you know, proccing so many instances of damage. Um, it just can't keep up. So yeah, that be warned. Uh, a, 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 a like basically strategy I use to combat the lag. Whenever I get like hard out a lag spike, um, you just press escape and you just pause the game. Obviously, you're playing in a group uh, that's not an option. Okay, then you're also going to want to use, see here, see, see my critical law, so this is the law here. You want to be activating it whenever you have a holy proc. So you're going to see I'm at physical, fire, I know holy's coming up next, hopefully I'm going to press it. Jump, holy, boom. And that, basically that gives me extra attack speed and extra crit during my holy lore. Um, you're wondering, why don't I spin, you know, spam that on cooldown? Because um, I'll do more damage that way, right? Well, uh, depending on the amount of cooldown reduction you're playing, uh, you can play a high CDR setup, or you can play a low CDR setup. I'm playing a lower CDR setup right now. So I literally cannot afford to press it on cooldown. If I press my lore on cooldown, um, I will then not have enough, uh, you know... I will not... I, I will not have enough uh, obsidian ring procs to actually reduce my cooldowns. Oh god damn it. Oh god damn it. Did I ruin my guide? I'm just gonna keep that in there. Hopefully that didn't freak you guys out. Um, so apparently there was sound still in the video. Um, and yeah, it just started playing mid-video. Mid so obviously this is the boss fight here. Um, you, what you can decide to do if you want to be crazy, um, I mean really crazy, but just remember this. What you can do, if, you, if you're confident that you can fight the boss without dying, you can stop pressing Iron Skin, and that means you can have more Obsidian Ring procs on the actual boss fight itself. Um, so, so then you can keep your lore 100% of the time during the boss fight. I choose to keep my uh, Iron Skin going due to the fact that I don't want to die. Um, you know, being dead is obviously not good. Because all Ash is one of the scariest bosses in the game. And your single target rotation doesn't change at all. And you just throw your hammers um, and just try not to die. But sweet ass boys, that's the gameplay portion. I'm going to go over stutter stepping next and all the gear, the skills and all that good stuff. Let's do it. Okay, so I showed you the gameplay. Now here's how to stutter step. Let's get into it. So you want to press escape, go to options. Go to your key bindings, scroll down until you see this thing called Force Move. Now what you're going to do is you want to bind this to mouse wheel up, mouse wheel down. Apply, accept. Okay. You're wondering why on earth I did that. Okay, so what that allows me to do is um, when, I, when I scroll now, see how it's spamming the crap out of the game? It, it's, I just scroll and it spams the crap out of the game. This allows you to stutter step at a really, really, really crazy high rate. Like you can see here, I can just go absolutely like ruthless with the commands. So now all you do when you have force move bound like that, you then 
also need to use attack while standing still. By default, it's like uh, left shift or something. I have mine on here. So I just press uh, attack while standing still. I press left click. And then I scroll. Uh, and then but that's, that's how I start a step really, really fast. Um, and it's really as simple as that. All you need to do. Okay, all you need to do. Let's go again. Attack while standing still. Left click. And then scroll. And you're good to go for days. Obviously, you could recreate um, the spamming. You could just make a um, uh, make a macro that allows you to spam the key. Because I've played this build. I played for like nine hours, I think, one day. And I was just pushing. And by the end of the day, my finger uh, was almost dead. So what you could do, technically, is make a macro. As long as it's not advanced and it doesn't automate anything. Um, it's not against the TOS. All you need to do is just make a macro that does the exact same thing. And just spams your, spams your force move key when you hold it down. And then you can do the exact same status step without having to scroll with your mouse. But this is the, this is the setup for poor hearters like myself. Um, so you're good to go. Alright, so let's go over the gear and the skills. We're using a blessed hammer, limitless. Uh, so this rune here makes the hammer uh, attack as holy, which then procs a holy clause. We'll go over holy clause in a bit. Uh, and on top of that, uh, when, an when a hammer hits an enemy, there is a 50% chance to create a new hammer that will be created at the location of the enemy hit. Okay, these hammers don't actually do full damage. Uh, they're not actually affected by the seeker set. It's really annoying. I don't know why Blizzard wouldn't even fix it. If they if they fix that, okay. It would buff Crusaders by a decent amount. Um, so probably that'll happen next season. They probably don't want to mess with the game too much during the season. But the main thing, okay, these extra hammers that you spawn, okay, they proc your Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, even though they don't, they don't cost Wrath. Um, so it's really, really powerful as far as resetting your cooldowns go. So basically it allows you to drop a lot of CDR to use this rune. Um, and on top of that, they also proc Life on Hit. And they also proc Holy Claws, which is, you know, uh, you know you get 1% life back. So it's like a free life proc. Um, it's a free one second cooldown reduction proc. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, yeah, it's, it's just all around really, really powerful rune. Uh, the dream is they fix it one day. That's the dream. With anything, Laws of Valor, critical. Obviously, this uh, gives us 8% attack speed passively, which is really nice because attack speed is effectively cooldown reduction and, you know, survivability. And on top of that, you can activate it for 15%. Increased attack speed and 100% crit damage. Obviously, this is what you're going to be using whenever you have a holy proc of your COE up. So you're going to see, Convention of Elements, it's at physical, then it's going to go fire, and then we'll have holy boys. And that's when you're going to activate. So you can actually overlap a little bit. So then you activate this, and then boom, you have that extra attack speed and crit damage during the whole, uh, you know, you basically you exaggerate your COE. So you actually get more value out of your COE by using this. We're then using provokes, too scared to run. Okay, uh, there's a ton of runes you can use. This, they're all quite powerful. Honestly, I've tested out a few of them. Uh, but too scared to run. Uh, so two hundred enemies have their attack speed reduced by 50% uh, and their movement speed slowed by 80% for four seconds. It's actually really powerful. The fact that the enemies slow down their attacks by that much means they hardly ever hit you. Um, it's especially noticeable on like really big slow hitting mobs like red hammers and um, sledge fists and stuff like that. They are just like so damn slow in between their attacks. They attack and then they just stand there for 10 seconds and they just don't do anything. So it makes it really easy to survive. On top of that, the 80% slow also procs your Bane of the Trapped, which is a gem we're using for this build. Um, so it means you actually do more damage as well. Obviously this is the thing you're spamming on cooldown because you get 30 wrath every time you press it. And you also get five extra wrath per enemy you hit, like we talked about. We're then using Iron Skin Flash. Uh, turns your skin to iron, absorbing 50% of all incoming damage for four seconds. Uh, on top of that, you get 60% movement speed, and you can run through enemies unhindered for five seconds. Really, really, really strong. That's the that's what allows you to keep your hexing pants up. Allows you to keep up. You know, your, your it's, it's really, really awesome survivability buff for Crusaders. Just a huge amount of mobility. And then using Falling Sword uh, Flurry, you really can use whatever rune you want. Uh, Flurry just is holy, so you get a little bit more damage out of it, even though the damage of this ability is basically non-existent. It would make up like less than 1% of your damage during the rift. Um, but Flurry actually, uh, what does it do here? Incapacitates the enemies for 5 seconds. So it's a bit of a CC when you jump inside the enemies. You can, I've seen people using Rise Brothers, I've tested out all the runes. Um, and i found Flurry is generally the most consistent rune. Uh, and it does that, as I said, a little, a little bit more damage, which is pretty irrelevant. 
Well, there's an Akarat's Champion Prophet. Um, so I didn't cover this before, so Akarat's Champion Prophet means when you die, you get a cheat death. This can happen every every uh, 20 seconds, right? So you, you literally get a cheat death just by having this on your bar. Because you have this up 100% of the time, it allows you to basically maintain a cheat death 24-7, which has a 20 second cooldown. Which is just awesome. Okay, don't get me wrong, it's not one of the best cheat deaths. Uh, you know, it'll just, you can proc and then instantly die two seconds later. Uh, it's not its not like you have a duration of invulnerability, but it is an extra heal, and it really does save your ass quite a lot of the times. So it, it mitigates those one shots. On top of that, gain 150% additional armor while it's active. Um, all around, really, really, really powerful rune. You know, it, it's like, you can't take this off your bars. Well, then using uh, Holy Claws. Um, increases, it so multiplies the weapon damage. It's effectively like, uh, imagine, imagine literally going onto your weapon and just adding, see how it says 10%, just change that to 20%. That's effectively what this rune does. It kind of reads a little bit weird. Increases the amount of dealt by your weapon is increased by 10%. Yeah, so it's just like having another 10% weapon damage, which is really nice. And on top of that, whenever you, de whenever you deal holy damage, you heal yourself for up to 1% of your total life. So you get a heal from this. Really, really, really good. Uh, we're then using Fervor, so obviously attack speed is really good for this build, attack speed is cooldown reduction, and then on top of that you get cooldown reduction, so it has the perfect um, synergy uh, for your cooldowns, and really, um, this is almost mandatory for the build. The build does uh, thrive, the more CDR you have, the more uptime you have of all your abilities, and the more damage you deal. Uh, so it's really, like, this This is what makes it, you kind of, it, it forces you into the one-handed setups. Um, which is kind of cool because I like attack speed and I like cooldown reduction. Uh, we're then using Blunt, increases the damage dealt by hammer, uh, by uh, Justice and Bliss Hammer by 20%. Um, it sounds really, really overpowered, but it's actually misleading um, how good it is. It's just additive damage, so it's just like having 15% uh, Bliss Hammer damage on your shields or 15 on your boots. So this is just like having an extra roll. This adds, they all add up and they actually diminish. So you've got to remember, um, damage increased by skills, so that's Hexing Pants. And on top of that, Bliss Hammer. It's all getting put into the same pool. So the more sources you have of this, the less value you get out of it. Um, so alternatively, if you want, you can pick up defensive talents or whatever the hell you want. Um, but I mean, if you're playing softcore, I would highly suggest just using Blunt because Crusaders lack damage. But it is the least... Um, significant damage talent you can have. Uh, well then using Finery, you gain 1.5% strength for every gem socket in your gear, right? Okay, so it sounds like, it sounds really mediocre, right? It's not. It's overpowered as hell. Uh, I thought it would only work on the five gems in your chest, like, so you, like, your chest and your pants, uh, but it also is active on your weapon, so you get 1.5 strength, your shield, 1.5 strength, your, you know, your rings, 1.5 strength, your necklace, one point. So in total, it gives you like, what, I think it's like 16.5 strength, uh, it's some, some insane amount of strength. So you can see here, even with full all resistance gems, I mean, I probably even inspect my paragons, yeah, look at this, look at my paragons, yeah, look at that, I'm at 13k strength with full all res gems. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous, and it increases the value of strength by an insane amount. We're then using a Hellfire Amulet. Uh, I have the Vigilant passive. This is the bad passive. You don't want that. Uh, the, if you were to have a Hellfire Amulet, I would seriously consider trying to get one with Indestructible. Uh, this is a really, really strong cheat death, and it um, makes you unkillable for five seconds. So it's like the best cheat death that exists in the game, and has a 60 second cooldown. Really, really overpowered cheat death. Um, obviously. Um, you know, you don't need it, uh, but it, I would highly suggest getting a Hellfire Amulet, which actually has that. Alright, so let's go over the year uh, and the Paragons and all that juice. So we're using a Furnace, it gives you 50% damage to Elites. Um, this actually allows you to kill Elites in the in the Rifts. It's kind of weird, the gameplay of Crusade is quite different from other classes. Um, I would suggest killing Blue Packs that are melee. If they're just following you around and they're not very dangerous, just let them follow you and just let them die. They will they will die almost as fast as the trash because you're using a furnace. And this allows you to kill the Rift Guardian faster. I've tried a few other setups, uh, but furnace seems to beat out every other setup every time. Um, I mean, it kind of sucks because it's just generic passive damage, but whatever. It's it's damage, man. It makes you it kind of changes the gameplay of the Crusader by allowing you to kill elites inside rifts, which is pretty badass. We're then using uh, Hexing Pants of Mr. Yan. 
So your resource generation and damage is increased by 25% while moving and decreased by 20% while standing still. So you're never standing still, right? Because you have, um, you've got Iron Skin Flash active the whole time. So you, you, you it just, it effectively equals to 25% additive damage and it equals to 25% resource cost reduction. Insanely powerful for one slot. Really, really GG item. And it's what makes the whole status stepping thing worth it. And on top of that, it means you can be mobile as well. Um, so it means, you, you know, because you're being forced to move the whole time, it's actually forcing you to do a good thing. Because moving equals survivability. It's like increasing toughness, but you just can't see it. Uh, we're then using Unity. Uh, reduces all damage taken by 50%. Because you use Unity on the cube, and then on your follower, you have a Unity, and you have a Templar Cannot Die Relic, so he takes literally no damage. So the net result is you get 50% damage reduction. Really, really overpowered. Okay, we are then using Johanna's Argument, uh, really, really uh, overpowered weapon. So this flail increases the attack speed of your Bliss Hammer by 100%. It's what allows you to just throw these hammers out like a flipping crazy, crazy person. And it's, it's what makes them really, really overpowered. The only other thing you can consider is a um, Spear of the Akinish. Do I have one in here? No, I don't think I do. Uh, so it's a holy damage spear. So you could put a holy damage spear as your one-hander. But then just remember, you have to change this to Johanna's argument. If you're going to do that. Do I even have one in the cube? Uh, so yeah, if you do go to the holy spear, you do want to go to the Johanna's argument. There it is. So if you, that's if you're using a holy spear. Which I am not. So I'm going to change that back to a furnace. Oh god, what have I done? I've got too many weapons. The more you get, the harder it is to find crap, man. So yeah, that is an option, and basically for your weapon, um, you're going to want to have, uh, I would highly suggest having a source of life on hit, or life per wrath spent on your weapon, so, and, and then 10% damage, because obviously you want damage range, but this is how my one rolled, so I'm, I'm just doing it like that, I think I, I have life on it in my braces instead, so that's an alternative, if you don't have life on it in your weapon, you can just get life on it in your braces, and it's like a, it's almost, uh, you know, works, it almost works, but you, it's kind of sketchy. Alright, uh, then we're using Guard of Johanna. Um, I think these are the dream rolls as far as damage output goes. Uh, so it gives you strength, crit, bliss hammer damage, and then a socket. So then you gain finery. Um, really, I think this is the best rolls you can get. Obviously, um, increases the damage in, uh, of your first three bliss hammers that hit. So uh, by 250% if you get a perfect roll. Really, really strong uh, affix. So this is going to be huge for, uh, you know, the entire Rift Clear, and especially on the Rift Guardian. I mean, it, this is active the whole time on the Rift Guardian, so it's going to increase your, you know, you're going to want to look for one with a good affix. And I th I'm pretty sure these are my favorite rolls. Obviously, if you don't have um, life in it braces and you don't have a life in it weapon, you could alternatively roll that to life per wrath spent on your shield, because you do need a healing source, otherwise you will die. Uh, these are the perfectly rolled boots here. Strength, Vit, All Res, Bliss, Hammer Damage. Main thing you want on your boots is Bliss, Hammer Damage. You're not always going to get All Res. Uh, but yeah, I would prefer... These are my favorite boots. Uh, you can see here these pants are not ideal. You want Strength, Vit, or Resistance. Um, 100%. But I have Secondary Res, so it's, I am unable to roll All Res on my pants. You're then going to want a Witching Hour. Uh, these are the rolls that you want. Strength, Vit, Attack Speed, Crit Damage. And then secondary res, uh, really, really powerful belt. Obviously, attack speed equals cooldown reduction, so it's actually giving you survivability, as well as the, the fact that you, you know, you, you, your character needs as much damage as it can get because you're using a unity. Um, you know, you need that damage output. Uh, the dream rolls on a heart of the light would be strength vit or resistance or strength vit elite reduction. They're both viable rolls. Uh, obviously, my one. Uh, Roll with secondary res, so I was forced into rolling a uh, secondary stat there. Uh, you're then going to want your crown of the light. So uh, the dream rolls here would be strength, bliss, hammer damage, crit. But I did not uh, have that. My mine did not roll with crit. So crit does beat out bliss, hammer damage if you have the option. So make sure you go crit if it has no crit. And then bliss, hammer damage after that. Uh, you're then going to want... To have Gab Gabriel's Van Braces, so uh, the dream rolls here would be Holy Damage, Strength, Vit, Crit. Uh, the Affix really, uh, I see people always like, getting worried about it. Uh, t I, honestly, I don't think it matters. It, it's completely, it's irrelevant if you've got a good Affix. Uh, you know, if even at 
single target, you're not going to have any problem uh, with wrath cost. So the fact is, you're going to be uh, you've got a really high attack speed setup, and you've got a bit of cooldown reduction. So you're going to be able to provoke all the time, right? So you're going to have enough. So so just ignore the affix on the bottom there. The the, the only, all that matters is that you have it because you do need it. You can't get away without these braces. You're not going to be able to attack the Rift Guardian without like losing all your you know your wrath. Um, but that they yeah, it's really just there to help you with the RG. Uh, then Hellfire Necklace, uh, you're going to obviously want a different passive than me, uh, but yeah, these are the dream rolls, holy damage, crit, crit, um, these, this is what you want your amulet to look like, especially end game, um, you know, you're going to have tons and tons of strength, uh, so you get more value out of holy damage than you will out of strength any day of the week. You're then using uh, Mountain of the Light, the shoulder pads, strength fit, aura, cooldown reduction. These are 100% the best rolls. Nothing else, boys. Um, Will of the Light, your gloves. You can uh, the, probably the dream gloves would be strength, cooldown reduction, crit damage, crit chance. So instead of vitality there, CDR. Um, but this does the job. Obviously, you want the damage multipliers. That's the main thing, and you can kind of get away without having CDR by picking up CDR and other pieces of your gear. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little bit funky. So I'm using um, Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. Okay, this is not the ring you want to wear. You want to be using a Trifecta Unity. Um, so what I mean by Trifecta Unity, I'm in a Unity that doesn't look like this. So I'm in a Unity that would say 6 crit, 50 crit damage, 15 elite damage. That's what you would want to use. Um, but the fact is, because I have no CDR on my gloves, I need to have more CDR on my rings. Um, you can see here, I'm probably about at the minimum amount of CDR that you'd want to be at. Like 46 is really pushing the boundary of like how low you can go. Um, the lower you go, the more at risk you are to having downtime in your abilities and getting basically killed. Um, so yeah, just keep that in your... Uh, so you do want a unity there, not a not in the ring, but if you're in the same situation as me and you don't have enough CDR, this is definitely a valid replacement. 8 CDR, 6 crit, 7 attack speed. Um, you know, the all viable stats. And then you're going to want a, a convention of elements that looks like this. Um, you know, crit, crit, cooldown. This is the dream rolls. Obviously, mine's not 8, and it's missing 0.5 crit. But other than that, this is a really good, um, you know, COE ring to use for sure. Okay, so that is the gear. Let's go over the legendary gems. I'm then using Pain Enhancer. So uh, the Astral Bleed itself, so it sounds like it's doing a lot of damage, right? Like 3,300% damage. Okay, that damage is basically irrelevant. It's really not even doing more than 2% of your damage. It's 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 literally only there for the uh, attack speed. The attack speed, you know, converts directly into survivability and damage. Um, the bleed itself, you don't need to worry about that. You see my pain enhancer is only rank 73, whereas my other gems are much, much higher because they actually affect the damage of my um, Crusader, unlike pain enhancer. Like Barbarians, on the other hand, and other classes, to have multipliers, they multiply all damage output, whereas Crusaders, our damage is just multiplied. So we just multiply Bliss Hammer by 750 and Falling Sword by 500. So it doesn't multiply the actual damage output of anything else, so that's why we, we don't really care about the Pain Enhancer rank. So you're going to want to rank up your other gems before that. So obviously the Pain Enhancer allows us to attack really fast in density and survive, and it, it means it, like we can get more value out of our Provoke. Because we generate more, you know, wrath depending on how many enemies there are. Okay, uh, we're then using Bane of the Stricken. Uh, this this is just for the Rift Guardian. It takes your Rift Guardian kill from like a five minute kill to like a two minute kill. Uh, automatically by default, just saves three minutes off like, every time you clear a rift. So it's really good. And then also within the rift, um, you can really benefit from it, um, especially because of the way I forgot to mention this when I was playing the game. Um, obviously your shield here, the Bliss Hammer damage is increased by 250% for the first three enemies it hits. You'll see when I'm fighting Elite Packs, I always try and position my character right next. So say this flag is the Elite Pack, I'm going to be wanting to always, like, attack directly on top of them. That way, okay, the first three hits are increased by 200, so you're, so you're going to make the shield hit the elite, this is the main thing I'm doing it for, is for the shield, and on top of that, your pain in it, your, your, and your Bane of the Stricken only procs on the first enemy that you hit, and then it goes on internal cooldown, and this allows you to, you know, focus your Bane of the Stricken to a certain extent, but it's more for the shields. 
Um, so yeah, that allows you to basically kill the Rift Guardian really fast. We're then using Bane of the Trapped. So this is a multiplier. You literally get, um, so mine was at rank 89. It's probably not a good example. Um, so I think like at lower ranks, it's at like 30% or something. So it's going to give you literally 30% um, increased multiply damage. Really overpowered. Obviously, um, you're provoked too scared to run. That's going to be slowing people all the time. And on top of that, the secondary effect of the gem um, procs the primary effect. So just by being uh, near the monsters, anything within 15 yards of you is multiplied by whatever your pain, uh, whatever your bane of the trapped rank is. Okay, as far as paragons go, um, I've been experimenting. Maximum wrath is definitely a viability because obviously, um, the higher attack speed you run, the more value you can get out of a, a maximum wrath. Because when you provoke, a lot of the time you're going to provoke and you're going to generate more wrath than you can actually store. So you're effectively deleting, uh, you know, wrath. Uh, it definitely has a viability. It really depends. If you're running a really, really high attack speed setup, okay, you definitely can go max wrath. So if you find yourself running out of wrath a lot, you can actually increase the maximum cap. So that means when you press provoke, you're going to have to gain more wrath. And you're actually going to have to, you know, it's going to decrease that time and what you're gonna you have chance for it for downtime of wrath if you understand what i'm saying uh you're then gonna want to cap out your moon speed you shouldn't have any moon speed on your boots because your boots should look like this um that's the dream if you do have moon speed on your boots then obviously don't go full 25 percent so if you have 12 percent moon speed on boots only put 13 in paragon as it does not go beyond 25 percent and then literally the rest into strength um you know we're using finery so we get so much value out of strength it's just insane um, as far as um, stat priorities go, definitely I would say uh, cooldown reduction, attack speed, then crit damage into crit chance. As far as defense goes, all resistance 100%. We're lacking all res in this build so much. Followed by armor, followed by life percent, and then go life regen. Um, area damage is currently... <laughs> it's bugged with everything. Area damage is currently bugged. It's going to be fixed next season, um, so yeah, area damage is not a priority. Obviously, resource cost reduction is huge. Life on it is huge, so you want to go Asia, life on it, then area damage, even though it's kind of bugged. It doesn't work entirely. It doesn't work. So apparently, it's not working with the Seeker set, but it is working with a default rune. So you're getting like, uh, whatever it is, like, uh, I don't know, one-eighth of the what you should get. And then, then you go find it, which is irrelevant. But yeah, boys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the guide. That is it. There was a lot of information to cover as, um, you know, it's an entirely new class. And I just wanted to go cover all the points. Um, I will try and get a written guide out so you can check below to see if I've done that. Um, but otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy your Crusaders. Peace out from me. And, um, you know, good luck out there, man, playing these playing these things. You're going you're gonna to have... I mean, it's definitely a lot of fun, boys. It's definitely a lot of fun.